Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Now this here is sexy, but it has absolutely nothing to do with filmmaking or visual effects because it's actually an audio interface, a pretty good one actually. However, it does look eerily similar to the product image for FX console from Video Copilot, which is an awesome free workflow plugin for Adobe After Effects that I've been using for quite a while now. FX Console is actually a pretty simple plugin. As I said, it has been out for quite a while. However, quite a lot of people don't actually seem to know about it and it's got some really great features that can really help you speed up your workflow in Adobe After Effects. Therefore, in this tutorial, I want to show you how you can get FX Console from Video Copilot for free, how to install it and show you some of the awesome stuff that you can do with it. First, let's talk about where and how you can get FX Console. Simply fire up your favorite web browser and then just go to www.videocopilot.net slash blog slash 2016 slash 10 slash new workflow plugin. Don't worry, I'm going to drop this link for you down in the video description, so be sure to check that out. Also, I'm totally aware that this plugin was actually released in October 2016, which is almost two years ago, so my video isn't really hot off the press, but I've realized that tons of people don't actually know about this plugin or are using it, and it's something that I use every single time I use After Effects. The only reason you're not seeing it in my tutorials is because I felt it was a bit too odd for people who are not aware of this plugin or don't know how to use it. You know, if there's something popping up on my interface and they just don't know what it is, so I figured I'd make this tutorial first. Also, on this website, you can obviously find a tutorial that Andrew Kramer himself did on it. Great video, highly recommend it, but you're about to watch one anyway, so, you know, you get two for the price of one. Also, do note, FX Console does require After Effects CC and above, but CC has been out for quite a lot of years now, so hopefully most people are on that. And yes, it will work with the latest version of 2018, which is what I'm using. But now, to get this plugin installed, simply come down a little bit, and then you'll be able to download the installer either for Windows or for Mac. Because I have a Windows machine, I'm going to download the Windows installer. And once that is done, I've got this zip file here on my machine. Let's just simply extract it right here and that'll unpack into a simple installer. Simply fire this up, that will obviously launch the installer for FX Console. Let's just press next. And because I have After Effects CC 2018 installed, I'm just going to select that. This is going to say CC 2014, 13, 15, whichever version you have, or you can also install this into a custom path, but then you need to specify the plugin and the script path. And these ones are within Adobe After Effects. There's a plugin and a script path that you can specify. I'm just go to install for 2018, then simply hit next next and you're done hit finish and let's launch adobe after effects and check out what you can actually do with fx console fx console is a workflow plugin as such it doesn't add any fancy effects into adobe after effects but it makes a lot of common tasks really really easy for example here i have a simple image of walter burning down a garage did this quite a while ago for one of our short films that we did and let's say i just want to color correct this a little bit so let's just apply a curves effect so let's come into our effects and presets panel. Let's search for curves, uh, color correction curves. Yep, you can either double click this or don't have the layer selected. So let's click and drag this, select this right there. And now I can kind of tweak the color. Maybe I'll push a bit of blue into it, drag a bit out of the darks. And I can, you know, obviously tweak this to my liking. Now, that wasn't the most complicated of things, but it did take a little bit of clicking around and dragging things from you know right to left to get all of this set up. Let's delete this curves effect and let's do the same thing with FX console. With the layer selected, I can simply press Ctrl and space, and this is going to bring up the interface for FX console integrated into After Effects. In here, I have a number of different controls, but the first thing and the most useful one is I have a search. In here, I can then simply search for curves and this will bring up all of the effects and all of the presets that match that term. And I can either now select this from here or I can simply hit enter and that's applied and selected the curves effect directly to my layer. I can now make my tweaks and I'm done. Now, you may feel that didn't really save a whole lot of time, but given how often you apply effects in Adobe After Effects, I mean, my average tutorial, I probably apply 50 effects going back and forth does start costing time. And with FX Console, all I have to do is select my layer, hold down Control and press Space, then search for whatever effect I want, hit Enter, and it's done. It just makes this digging for effects so much easier. The other thing that FX Console gives you, let's just try to apply a glow effect. And one of the problems I have is that I actually do have quite a lot of effects that have glow. I even have duplicates that have the same name. Like under Ignite, I have a glow plugin. 
But then After Effects also comes with a glow. So I, I kind of have to dig through and then browse and look for which one do I actually want. Now again, FX Console does make that a whole lot easier. Let me select my layer, Control and Space to bring up FX Console. Let's search for glow. And yeah, all of them are here. And I do actually have two glow effects at the top. And I may have to try out which one is which. Let's select the first one. And that's actually the one from Ignite. So let's just delete that. Let's go Control and Space, search for Glow again. And I know I want the second one. I don't actually want this top one here. So what I can do, I can right click onto this Glow effect at the top, blacklist it, and now select this Glow effect here, which is the one I actually want. Right click, say Add to Favorites, and it's actually going to order it to bring it to the top. So now let me close FX Console, reselect the layer, Control Space, type Glow, hit Enter, and now I've applied the actual effect that I wanted to my layer and I've kind of filtered through all of the noise. Let me reselect my layer, Control and Space to bring up FX Console and let's just apply a flare effect. Again, I actually have quite a lot of different effects and plugins for flares and you may have presets as well that you may want to choose between. Let me say I want this anamorphic lens flare I really like so I can just right click that, mark that as a favorite and that's going to bring it to the top of the list. So whenever I search for flare now, Anamorphic Lens Flare is going to be at the very top. Let's hit enter. And that has applied the effect to my layer and selected it. Now I can change the blend mode and tweak it in any way that I want. And this makes it really easy to filter through all of the different effects and apply the right ones at the right time directly to your layers. Now, if you accidentally blacklisted your favorite effect or you want to make some setting changes to FX Console, simply press Ctrl and Space to bring up FX Console. And if you don't have a layer selected, you won't get this effect search. So you can just, you know, go into the settings, do all sorts of other things. Just simply sit this little cog wheel and it's going to bring up the settings for FX Console. You can actually change the UI color from light to dark, but you know, because my heart and soul are black, I like this dark interface. You can change the shortcut. Right now it's Ctrl and Space, but you can, you know, customize this to your liking. And over on the right hand side, you'll see that under my favorites, I've actually got my glow marked as a favorite and I've got the anamorphic lens flare marked as a favorite. Also, you can see this blacklist here and obviously I can kick them off this favorites or this blacklist at any point in time. I can also define aliases for my effects. So if I don't find them by one name, I might add an alias to find them more easily by another. Or I can define overrides where I can actually define presets. And these ones are actually for preset specific so that when I apply this effect, it'll actually apply a certain preset that I've defined in After Effects instead. Not going to go through that in all too much detail. The other really useful thing are these shortcuts here. For example, let's say a curves effect is like one of my favorite effects actually. So I can essentially say key number one is going to be mapped to curves. So I'm going to add a new shortcut. Just going to search for curves, add that in, maybe the glow. And yes, I want my glow here. So that'll be keyboard shortcut number two. Let's hit OK. Let's just delete all of my effects, select the layer, Control and Space. And you can see here are my two shortcuts, one for curves, two for glow. So if I now press one, I'll just apply a curves effect. Do the same thing again, press two, I'll apply the glow effect. And if I want to apply maybe something totally different, maybe I want a, maybe I'll star glow effect. And if I right click any of these, obviously I can favorite it, I can blacklist them, but I can also create a new shortcut or replace any of my shortcuts. So let's just create a shortcut. Control space again, and now three is my star glow effect. So this is really easy to manage your effects and make it really quick to just apply exactly what you need to your layer without having to search for them or go through tabs of effects and presets and other things. So I really like FX Console for that. And again, in my standard workflow, I use it all the time. I don't even use the effects and presets panel at all. The next most awesome thing that I use FX Console for is to take screenshots of my composition. Usually, if I wanted this image or my composition exported, you can go up to composition, go save frame as, let's save it as a file, um, define an output path, and maybe you'll you know jump into the settings and say, oh, actually I want this as a, let's say I want this as a PNG, and yes, I do want the alpha, maybe I'll just sum up the compression to make sure I'm not compressing it, hit OK, OK, and then render this out as an image, and you know, it's, it's as easy as that. However, with FX Console, I don't need any of that at all. Let's return to our composition. Let's just bring up FX Console. And now I've got an option to take a snapshot of my current composition. That's just going to save an image into the FX Console internal gallery. The second one over is actually showing that gallery. I'll get there in a second. But then I can also just directly download this. So I can actually click here and copy the data to clipboard or I can save it as a PNG or as a JPEG. Let's just copy to clipboard. Let's jump over into, let's say Photoshop. 
Control V, and there you go. Just straight out of After Effects. Didn't have to do any magical fiddling around and exporting from After Effects and just grab it straight off. Let's return to Adobe After Effects. Again, Control and Space to bring up FX Console. And let's just click onto this little gallery icon here. And that is going to bring up the FX Console Gallery. The cool thing about this is that this actually contains all of the images that I've taken with FX Console over the years. And you can see there's lots and lots of different variants, like slight tweaks of you know different images, different styles I've tried out. For example, here, this Walter Byrne Garage, I've tried a whole bunch of different coloring options. And I can now just select these ones and kind of jump through and have a look at different variants and see which one do I like better. And this is great for just comparing different designs. The cool thing as well, you can actually hold down Shift while you're selecting these and you can select up to four images, kind of compare them side by side. You can obviously zoom in and out of any of these to just kind of get a feel for what all of these look like. Also, the cool thing is because all of these images are saved as PNGs, means they have an alpha channel, they have transparency. So I don't have to deal with, you know, setting the export settings to transparency. And even cooler, let me just make this a little bit smaller. I can actually drag and drop these images straight out of FX console into my composition or onto my layer. And that will import that icon from the gallery from FX console right back into my project. Let's just close this out and there you go. Here's an image that I took, I don't know when, quite a while ago, just imported back into my project. Let's hit Control and Space to bring up FX Console again. Obviously, this little camera icon here is take a screenshot, so let's just click that. FX Console just took a screenshot. And if I now jump into the gallery, I can see that the last image in my gallery is the screenshot that I just took. Again, you can actually right click, copy this to clipboard or save it out as PNG or JPEG or delete it. You can also open it in Explorer directly. So they'll just open it on your hard drive. If you want to move it around or do whatever you want with it. So this is really useful for just getting stuff. I usually use it for thumbnails. Like I usually define and create my thumbnails in After Effects and just export them using FX console and up they go to YouTube. But taking screenshots and managing and applying all of my effects is something that I do a lot with FX console. And even though they're all really small things, if you do them really regularly, even just shaving off a couple of seconds on each of those steps really makes your life a whole lot easier. By the way, just really quick tip, let's just fire up the settings for FX console one more time. There's an option to enable full resolution screenshots. If you disable this option, let's hit OK. When you take a screenshot, that is going to use the resolution of your current composition. So right now I'm set to full. Let's take a screenshot. Let's just change this over to quarter. Let's take a screenshot. Let's jump into the gallery. Let's just bring both of those up and just zoom in. And you can immediately see that the second one was taken at quarter resolution. The other one was at full resolution. So just be aware that in FX console, you enable full resolution screenshots if that is your ish. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check the video description. I'm going to drop a link to the videocopilot.net website where you can download FX console right in there. And obviously do check out Andrew's tutorial if you want something that's a whole lot more in depth. I kind of feel like I brushed right over the top, but I just wanted to talk about it. It's just, it's an awesome plugin. It's really simple to use and it will make your workflow a whole lot faster. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, let's click or tap these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me in what I do on this channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.